mistakes. Well, as it turns out, Aunt Samantha's made a couple doozies in her time. This story is about the sort of human thing that we all do, which so Aunt Samantha is not uh, uh, exempt from. This hypocritical hatred crap that we do, where we want one thing for ourselves but cannot find it in our cold black hearts to want it for anyone else. What is that about? There was a woman back in the mid-1800s who tried to show Aunt Samantha the error of her ways through satire. Unfortunately, Aunt Samantha didn't figure out what that concept was till about five years ago when she met Stephen Colbert. But she tried. Okay, class. Does everybody have their chalk and their chalkboards? Ready for today's lecture? We are going to be studying tw 21 ways to scalp an Indian. Now this will be on the test, so make sure you're taking proper notes. Are we ready? Good. Okay. Number one. Make him a non-person. Human rights are for people. Convince Indians that their ancestors were savages and make them wards of the government and write history books with half the story. Number two. Convince the Indian that he should be patient and that progress takes time. We all know how that goes. Okay, three. Make him believe that things are being done for his own good. Four. Get some Indian people to do the dirty work. Now, there's always somebody who will act to disadvantage their own people. We know this. Five. Consult the Indian, but do not act on the basis of what you hear. That's pointless. They're savages. We don't need to know or care. Number six. Ah, this one's a really important one. Make sure you're taking your notes. Insist that Indians go through the proper channels. Make the channels and procedures so difficult that they won't even bother trying. Seven. Make the Indian believe that you are working hard and sacrificing for him. That imply that he should be appreciative. This is the ultimate skill in stealing human rights, obtaining the thanks from your victim. Number eight, allow a few individuals to make the grade and then point them out as an example so that these savages know that they can actually do something in their world. Is making things so. Number nine, appeal to the Indian sense of fairness and tell him that even though things are pretty bad, that it's not right for him to make such strong protests. Number ten, encourage the Indian to take his case to court. It's a very safe solution because the laws are stacked against him. Number eleven, Make the Indian believe that things could be worse and convince him that to attempt to reign the rights that he's lost is likely to jeopardize the rights he still has. This one's important, okay? Number 12, set yourself up as the protector of the Indian's human rights. Then act only on those violations that you choose, which would be none. Thirteen, pretend that the reason for the loss of human rights is for some other reason than that the person's an Indian. Fourteen, make the solution more complicated than necessary. Fifteen, insist upon an amity, then play one group's special solutions against another group's wishes. Sixteen, Select very, very limited alternatives and tell the Indian that he indeed does have a choice. Number 17, again, very, very important and very key. Convince the Indian that the leaders who are most beneficial and powerful are really 
dangerous and not to be trusted. Or simply just lock them up. Or, you know, refuse to listen to the real leaders and spend much time on the weak ones. Attempt to get the best leaders into high paying jobs where they have to keep quiet to keep their paychecks coming. 18. Tell the Indians they cannot consider themselves when there's a whole nation to think of. That would just be selfish on their part. 19. Remove rights so gradually that people don't realize it and that's happened until it's too late. 20. Rely on reason and logic, our reason and logic, instead of rightness and morality. Number 21, last one. Hold a conference on human rights and have everyone blow off some steam. Send them home feeling like things are well in hand. Now I want you to remember that the savages aren't the only group that this can be applied to. We've been doing it for since the beginning of dawn. You can do it with the colors, you can do it with the chinks. Heck, men have been doing it with women, their mothers, their daughters, their wives, as long as we've been around. Make sure you get ready in study class. <laughs>